Warning, the following video may contain adult language and themes. Your discretion is strongly advised. If you have a problem with this, back out now. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. So, um, this is just a really ad-libbed video. I just heard through the grapevine, well, not the grapevine, I just watched Hatman's video and about it. And by Hatman's video, I mean like the first four minutes, or three minutes, I don't know. <laughs> but I heard that Steve Cunningham won against Amir Mansoor. He, he took a ten-round decision. It was for the USBA heavyweight title, some Mickey Mouse belt. Um, the United States Boxing Association, I believe it is. Uh, he beat Amir Mansoor. I did not see that coming. Although, I think in my pre-fight video, I said either Amir Mansoor is going to win by mid to late knockout, or Steve Cunningham is going to win by decision. So, but, but, you know, to be perfectly honest, my final choice was Amir Mansoor by knockout. Now, <laughs> so I didn't get it right. I, I, ah, another one I didn't get right. Motherfucker. Ugh. But, um, if I would have gone with Steve Cunningham, I would have gone by decision. Um, yeah, I'm pretty surprised at this. I thought Amir Mansoor would win. Um, from what I heard about from Hatman's video, it was a pretty dramatic fight. I'll have to check it out, you know, sooner or later. But th another thing I want to talk about in this video is that I, the main reason I got back into boxing and the heavyweight division and why I started following fighters was mainly because of Deontay Wilder, if I'm brutally honest. Um, I don't really give that much of a crap about the other boxers, you know what I mean, in the heavyweight division. Uh, the ones I do care about are the ones that Deontay Wilder is going to have to steamroll through to accomplish his goals. And the reason why I'm so interested in Deontay Wilder is because he's a breath of fresh air to the heavyweight division. To what a division that was just full of a bunch of robotic robots. Hugging, jabbing, grabbing robots, you know? It's a breath of fresh air to get somebody like him in there. He, it almost seems like he's been transported from another era, you know, a better era, <laughs> the 90s and the 80s. It seems like he belongs in that era, you know? It, belong, it seems like he belongs with Riddick Bowe and Lennox Lewis and all those other guys. Uh, and so it's, it's cool that we, we have this, this, this heavyweight, you know, contender who's, who's so full of life, you know? And, you know, if Deontay Wilder one of these days is exposed and just flattened and goes into hiding with Osama Bin Laden, you know, I may stop following the heavyweight division. I may stop making videos because I will probably lose interest. Unless, unless we get another, you know, uh, American hope coming down the uh, pike, I probably will lose interest because he's, to be brutally honest, he's the main reason why I follow boxing in the first place. So if, if Deontay Wilder is exposed, you know, and he just dies out or something, I probably will stop following the division. To be quite honest, I, I just do these other prediction videos for fun. I really don't care. I'm, I'm not following many other boxers' careers that closely. Um, and I was thinking about doing an April Fool's video, <laughs> an entire video I impersonating some of the other boxing commentators on YouTube. I was thinking of doing one with Dwyer. Hello, this is Dwyer, you know. Um... <laughs> Let's take it a step further, you know, and another step further. Quite frankly, I was ecstatic about it. It was awesome. Let's take it another step further. You know, Deontay Wilder is just a long right hand, you know. He's a he's a hooker, you know, he's a left hooker, he's hiding in the bushes and then he'll he'll jump out and left hook you and below the weight and you know, his his whatever, I don't know, fuck it. <laughs> That's a funny whatever. Um I don't know, man. What other fights coming on? I don't really give a fuck. Um, I have to look at some of the other fights I predicted, but when's Deontay Wilder going to... You know, we all think that the next move by Deontay Wilder is to challenge for the WBC heavyweight title with Stiverin or Chris Ariola, but that's... I think that's going to be for a while, because I think Chris Ariola and Stiverin are actually fighting um, Jennifer in May, I believe, <laughs> in May, and when that happens, I'm sure there'll be a long while before they fight Deontay Wilder then, you know what I mean? They're not going to fight immediately after that, so uh, you think Dan I think Deontay Wilder's going to have to pick up another fight in between then, so I don't know who he's going to pick up, maybe he's just another tomato can, maybe he'll, he'll, uh, you know, do the obligatory fight with Marcus Rohde, you know, that journeyman, t the, t the the regulator, the tuna fish, he'll just have a, uh, or maybe he'll fight Damon, no, oh, you already fought Damon Reed, you can't fight that guy again, <laughs> that obligatory fight, you know, he could fight James Tony. that'd be like a, such a safe fight, you know, and Dan Tewada can brag, I knocked out, you know, a Hall of Famer, <laughs> a fat, 
blubber whale of a Hall of the Famer. Anyway, this is just my quick vid. Really disappointed I got this one wrong. Eh, but like I said, I'm not. I don't claim to be an expert. I don't claim to even really be that good of a predictor. And the fact that I get even half of these wrong is a miracle. Anyway, so that's pretty much the be the the most the biggest fight I'm looking forward to is Deontay Wilder versus Stivern. Because I always think it's a foregone conclusion that Stivern's going to win. Uh, anyway, so take it easy and. Um, we, oh yeah, we got we got oh, Alex Lay up high and Vladimir Klitschko to look forward to. Oi, <laughs> oi, go old, Krusty the Clown. That's my Krusty the Clown impression. Fucker. Okay, see ya. Bye.